Yo, what's going on, YouTube? It's the Reboy on Twitch back again with another Warzone 2.0 settings video. The number one console player settings in all of Warzone. Back with the, uh, you know, some settings and stuff. The new Albagra Fortress Resurgence map, and you just dropped. And you guys are gonna need to know the best settings possible to be as good as you could possibly be while fighting against all these PC nerds, baby. So, but without waiting any longer, let's get right on into it. If you have seen any of my previous settings videos, surprise, surprise, this may be wild to you, but not much has changed. I don't change my settings very often. I'll uh, play on control, you already know. We don't play with the, we don't use that mouse and cry baby stuff. We play on bumper, jumper, tactical, not flipped. I aim and shoot. I aim and shoot with the triggers. I jump with L1. I press X to throw stuns. I melee with circle. I crouch with my paddle using my scuff controller. Code read, by the way, if you want to get one of your own. I do not ping with a bumper. I take my left thumbstick off or left thumb off the thumbstick and press the D-pad to ping. I am one of the very few people who plays with vibration on. Anybody everywhere is going to tell you to turn it off. I cannot play with vibration disabled. It makes me shoot squigglies. So most people are going to tell you to turn that off. Because of that, I got to have the haptics on full. And now I play on a different vertical sensitivity than i do a horizontal sensitivity uh way back when jetpacks were a thing and you had to look up down left right people flying all over the place i played on seven uh just seven seven then when you went to world war ii and i never had to do anything up up or down more than a second story window or looking to the ground from the second story i tried turning my sensitivity down a little bit for the vertical side I felt like that helped me out with A, beaming people off of head glitches, and B, with snipers being able to fine tune that aim to make sure I don't get a hit marker. Now with Warzone, with a lot more tall buildings back into play, people still flying all over the place, you having to look down uh, from roofs to people, uh, I do not recommend you copy and paste my settings, but my muscle memory is so finely tuned to this, I do not want to change it. Uh, I would recommend you go with somewhere between at the absolute lowest absolute bare minimum five and you don't really want to be any higher than say 10 maybe 12 at the highest seven to ten is like that sweet spot in middle sensitivity it is not worth it one one thing i i one quote i always live by is it is way better to hit every single bullet in every single gunfight being on a lower sensitivity and having more control of that than it is to occasionally once in a while be able to turn on somebody but in consistent overall gunfights that you have more often you're not as beamy and accurate so playing on max sensitivity, if you want to be as good as possible, playing on a higher sensitivity is just not worth it at all. Being able to turn fast is not anywhere near as important as being able to hit every single bullet as, as, from as far away as possible, as often as possible. The sensitivity multiplier. So the third person, this is for the laser eyes, back when the superpowers were a thing, I turned that down to 0.5. Uh, that's not really any relevance anymore. None of these are very important. Vertical aim axis, all these are on standard. Uh, aim down sight behavior, hold it. Uh, anything else your auto tactical sprint I do not play with ATS on anymore it is not worth it in Warzone 2 come you know Warzone 3 MW3's integration slide cancel supposedly coming back we'll see if that's going to be worth it or not but for now it is not worth the pros and cons are not worth to be using auto tactical sprint there's another setting you should have later on so hold on for that one prioritize interact that's another important setting that's how you're going to be able to grab uh, things off the ground way quicker you can literally just go through an entire pile of loot and scoop it all up just by spamming the square button it's way way faster than having to hold it for each individual item i did not know that at first when i played for tap to reload for the longest time that is definitely a setting you should change and then armor play behavior you want that on apply all instead of apply one that's another minorly important uh change to make uh advanced settings back in warzone one we had aim assist turned off because you know I was trying so hard to be as good as possible. I didn't need the cheats. Now, you better change of heart. I know who a lot of the mouse and keyboard players are, and I like making them whine and cry and bitch and complain. I find it absolutely hilarious. So aim assist cranked to the max. Abuse it as much as possible, baby. I do play on the default one. Uh, and then my aim response curve is linear. I've tried a bunch of different combos of aim assist types and response curves. I tried them all. And the one that felt best to me, the one that's going to feel most natural to you is the one that you want to use. I like the way linear and default felt. I recommend you try all of these out. Whichever one feels the best, the most natural to you is the one you're going to want to go with. And then don't change it. Quit changing it. You change it back and forth. You're going to mess with your muscle memory. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be why your aim feels off some days and on some days and off other days. Uh, pick one and then just stick with it 
Um, the custom sensitivity for zoom that this allows you to be even more fine tuned and accurate when you are aiming down sights and you want to be as fine tuned as accurate as possible. Uh, with hip firing, you can be a little bit more faster, look left, right, look faster and stuff. And then with the ADS sense, you want to be more fine tuned and precise. So I've got 0.8 on the lower zooms up to five times and then 0.9 on like the sniper scope six times and above. The dead zones, you ideally want this to be as low as possible. You're going to want your dead zone to be as low as possible. If your stick is just drifting a little bit, that's not really a problem. Think about how often your stick just set, slightly moving on your own is going to affect you winning or losing a gunfight almost ever. So that's not that really big of a deal. As long as it's not moving way too fast and you set your controller down for two seconds and you're doing 360s, you don't want that. But ideally, the, the less the lower your dead zone is, the more responsive your thumbstick is going to feel, the more more fine tuned you can be so as low as possible you can get once you if you start if you feel like your thumb stick is like jerking up or just like jerking in a random direction stuff that means it is time to get a new controller no amount of chaining your your uh your dead zone is going to be beneficial to you you might want to just get a new controller again old read on scuff the left stick i switched that down to 0.8 back in warzone 1 to try and help reaching that maximum movement speed with the slide canceling stuff i don't really feel like it made too much of a difference at all 0.99 is completely fine same thing with the right stick you want as much range of motion as possible that is why i do also use the thumb sticks on mine to be able to move as much as possible and be as fine tuned with your aim as you can get uh, i do have these smart triggers on my hashtag code read hashtag scuff so the most that i have to click down on my trigger is that's that's as far as it'll go so the dead zones don't really matter but you do want those to be as low as possible if you do not have the instant triggers on your controller uh the gear behavior i have not really experimented with any of that too much so uh that's just kind of like that that turns your control into like a you lean left in your air your character aims left type situation um i haven't really explored with that too much that could be something for fun but i don't really see it having too much benefit in actual gameplay so skip past all of that the this is the auto tactical sprint uh, alternative right here single tap run this makes it so there's never going to be a situation when you're going to want to sprint forward but not be tactical sprinting if you're sprinting you want to be gun point in the sky running as fast as possible if you want to bot walk forward say using a shotgun or a kimbo's then you can do that uh if you don't want to if you want to move slightly you can do that as well single tap run is your best setting for sure um it gives you the ability to what we call bot walk it's when you just straight up walk in a straight line you're no sprinting you're not making as much noise uh but you're moving faster than being crouched or something like that that is definitely a setting that you want to have on around all these mantles turn those off that will prevent you from mantling in the middle of gunfights very very annoying turning them off abs absolute lightsaver lightsaver now there's another important setting so with the recent buffs to slide speed a lot of people ask me reed are you going to switch back to standard where you're tapping to slide and i tried it for a little bit it feels way better it definitely does feel way better movement wise sliding around quickly on people but there are some jumps and dives and from ledge to ledge that you can only make using the dolphin dive parachute when you tap the dive off a tiny little ledge parachute into onto another ledge you can only do that playing on this setting with the tap dive uh so i don't think it's worth giving up the ability to make those jumps just to be able to slide slightly quicker in some gunfights when that really doesn't make that drastic drastic of a difference to be worth it so i'm staying on inverted for now from warzone 3 with slide canceling totally coming back we'll see if that's something that gets changed parachute autoplay is another thing you want to turn off it is just overall not worth it to have that safety cushion of knowing you're not gonna break your ankles if you are never ever winning a grace a race to the ground because everybody else will be pulling their shoot a, a slight second later than you you're gonna break your ankles sometimes it happens to the best of us it, it's gonna happen you just deal with it move on uh go go respawn and go with your next life what's another important setting i do not use the backpack alternate controls especially with the small backpacks now not really worth it over half of the people watching this video right now actually aren't subscribed to my channel so if you're one of those people you fill in the rest with something what, the, what, what, is, what kind of script is this how are you gonna write half the script and not we mean fill in the blank bro it's, I'm sorry, my editor's useless. I don't know, man. Subscribe, drop a sub. Don't forget to like and comment. Thanks. Graphics. Graphics on demand, texture streaming. I just turned that off. I don't notice a difference with it on or off. When you told me to turn it off, I turn it off. All the motion blurs, all these, you want to turn these all off. Zero. No depth of field, none of that. No film grain. Fidelity cast. 
Somebody told me to turn it on and to put it to 80. I noticed no difference with it on, with it off, with it on 100, with it on 20, 81. Noticed no difference, but somebody told me to do it that, so I did. Uh, one, we are on 120 hertz, 1440p now. Doesn't feel or look any different than 1080, 60, but whatever it is, what it is, I got it, so I might as well use it. Uh, field of view, I play on 99. Yeah, I know the console players, you've been waiting years to finally have this FOE slider. Do not be a Billy Bob and crank it all the way up to max. That is not the best. There's a reason why you see the best of the best players in the world, the ones that are really, really good, not play on max, max FOV. It's because it's not the best option. Um, ideally, you want to be somewhere between 90 on the lower end if you feel like you struggle to see things, or 110 at the max is where is as high as you want to go. The real sweet spot is 100, and I am just so, so different and quirky, so I play on 99 because, you know, I'm different and quirky like that. You want your field of view. Uh, I was told the uh, effect is the better one, and then your field of view for your weapon, you want that to be wide so you can see as much as possible on your screen. Third person field of view, this one doesn't really matter too much. You're very rarely ever in third person, but you want it as much as possible. This is more so when you're like parachuting in and you go third person for that. Turn your camera movements. I did the entire Orion camo grind with this at default and I had no idea why my screen was so damn shaky. Turn this down. You don't want it to be shaking like a twerk team. 50%, it's as low as you can go. Ideally you want it at zero, but as low as you can go. Brightness, that's gonna be more uh, more specific for your monitor and your setup and how you want it. I've just got mine default 50. Um, that there, there are monitor settings that I go in with as well. Safe area, same thing that goes with your specific monitor. Eco mode, turn that off. Uh, I was told that some people on PS4s found that their PlayStation does not sound like an absolute jet engine when they have this on. So you might wanna try that if that's something that's uh, beneficial to you. But I was also told by some people that they feel like the aim assist just doesn't work if they play with the eco mode on and when they turn it off it does work might be something to try i have no need for this so i turn it off uh where else we have the audio settings uh preface this by saying all audio in warzone is not good it just it's just not good in the first place so just warzone audio call of duty audio has never been uh ideal so no i've tried so many different settings to try and make things better i can do sound eq with my specific setup and it's really not that big of a difference uh, nothing in Warzone sounds crazy good. Uh, headphone bass boost is the one I'm currently rocking. Master volume. That's another point. It is not worth it. It's not worth it while playing Call of Duty in the comfort of your home with zero dollars on the line for free for funsies who go deaf at the age of 27. Turn your master volume down, bro. It's not helping you hear footsteps as much as you think it is, bro. It's just making you lose your hearing. Turn it down. I went to 68 because it's as close to 69 as the game would let me go. Um, gameplay music volume, 99% of people are going to turn this all the way down to zero. The sick background music you're hearing right now is the in-game audio. I just got it on because it's, again, it's not that deep. Um, voice chat volume, this kind of depends on how loud you find people are in game chat. I don't like when my teammates smoke alarm is going off and it's interfering with my ability to hear what few things in this game you can hear. So I got to kind of turn pretty low. I can adjust that. That's where the triangle, the little star is. I've got that in my quick settings if I ever need to adjust that really fast because uh, teammates are louder or quieter than I want them to be. War tracks volume, that sick tunes you're going to hear anytime I get in the vehicle. Crank that up. Whenever you hear Sweet Home Alabama playing when I'm in a truck, that's the war tracks. Uh, voice chat got that on you know you love love hearing them funny defcoms if you do play uh you know br or something with prox chat even if you don't use prox chat you want that turned on that way you can at least get that slight bit of information on if somebody is nearby you you'll see that red little bar on the side or red little name on the side letting you know that somebody's at least close enough with you within or close enough to you to be able to hurt on prox chat um, I have my mic set to have the absolute worst settings you could possibly get. I want this thing to sound like absolute garbage when I'm talking in game chat. So this, with the fan in the background, is the read boy on Twitch game chat mic. Anytime I say something to my random teammates in game chat, this is what it sounds like for them. I love it. I am hilarious. I am a terrible person. Um, I had subtitles actually turn on. You'll see subtitles turn on in a lot of my uh, in a lot of my uh, more recent gameplays. That is for no other reason than I found out it bugs people. I don't even notice that they're there. I, I don't even realize that subtitles are like on my screen anymore, and it bugs other people. So I think it's hilarious. And I just I got them turned on with the largest setting possible. By the way, I think it's hilarious how much it bugs people. You don't want mono audio on. 
I don't have the reduced to nice effect. There's another very important setting that I'm missing somewhere. Where is it? Interface. We're, we're in the interface now. Color customization. That's why my game might look slightly different than you feel like yours does. Uh, one big point is why my pings, my default colored pings, neutral colored as you will, are pink purplish. Uh, is because I have it set to that in the neutral colors. You change around the, the way you have different pings set if you like that. Uh, I have the color filter set to filter two on both menu and the in-game. And then I've got the intensity for that set to 80. That's why my that has a little slight filtered effect to it uh, that changes the colors of the gameplay. Minimap shape, you want that to be a square. Uh, as you can see right here, it is quite literally bigger. You can see more of the minimap, more information. So you want that turned on to square for sure. Uh, the compass, fun fact that not a lot of people know about is the compass right at the top of your screen is if people are shooting without a suppressor, even if you don't have a UAV, they can still show up as a red dot on your mini map or on your on your compass, not on your mini map. They won't do it on your mini map, but it will show up as a red dot on your compass. So that is definitely something that you want to have on. Even, I still have not trained myself. That's like a BR player thing. I'm more multiplayer guy. It's a BR player thing is to know to look at your compass and call out using like the cardinal direction and stuff. I don't really do that too much. I, I've still not yet built that uh, that into my ability to be able to look at that. Uh, you want hit markers on, especially the damage base. You want to know when you get a red X. Um, when you get a red X so you can tell when somebody's dead. That's definitely very, very important. Uh, anything else? Any other center dot? So I don't really need this as much because I just know where the center of my screen is. But if you are trying to improve your centering, which is definitely an important thing to be able to do, um, this is definitely beneficial to have on. I don't even see it, so I don't notice it's there, so it doesn't hurt me at all to have it on. But yeah, I would recommend you turn this on, probably with the smallest one, as long as you can see it. Uh, the smallest one to not take up too much of the screen. And you have that done on, and be, be, be conscious. If you're working on your centering, be conscious of where that center of your screen is. That would help with your centering and be ready for when people jump around corners on you. This was added back in Cold War. This was added a very long time ago. It wasn't in Warzone 1, but a lot of people don't know about the telemetry. This is how you can see your ping or your packet loss in-game on console nowadays. These are a thing. I don't need the clock or the, the connection meter. I don't need those on. Um, but this is how you can see what your connection looks like uh, in-game on console nowadays. And then the biggest, most important setting to change that a lot of people don't know about is if you are sick and tired of getting absolutely nuked every time somebody drops a flashbang 50 meters away from you and you want to stop going blind at the age of 27, uh, inverted flash, turn that on. It is going to scare you the first couple times. You are not going to be, uh, you're not, you're going to think your game crash. Uh, but once you get used to it, it's just way better. This absolutely saves my eyesight. Whenever I get flashed in game, I get flashed to IRL. So turning the inverted flash so your screen goes black, clutch, W setting right here that I definitely recommend you turn on. Other than that, that's all the number one console player in all of Warzone's number one console settings to use for the new Albagi Fortress map. So make sure you go out there and drop some really good games and high kills and bombs and stuff and all that really, really good YouTuber stuff that all the other YouTubers say. Um, blah, blah, blah. Don't forget to like. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, yeah, y'all have a good one.